Kelly, this is Michelle. Michelle's the I think she just wanted the reflection. Very, several very special presentations planned for you today. But first, we'll go over what's on, on your tables in front of you. Many of it, many, many of these things will look familiar to you. We're always continuing to look for your feedback. We don't get as much anymore, so I'm not sure if that's good or bad. But please continue to submit your feedback. We do make changes based on it. If you're interested in winning a door prize, Katie, what's our door prize We've today? We've got a mug. A no and go mug. So if you're interested in, in a chance to win that, please fill out the green slip. Updated list of the no and go presentations coming in the in the near future Done. two recipe cards which we'll learn a little bit more about and some information on stress eating some great tips there so this morning we have several presenters for you i'll start out by introducing dr weber but she will actually present after our, our reflection dr weber is a family medicine provider with us she's been here for seven years and she had a really special experience, or I call it special, I don't know how you feel about it. This summer, she was selected out of over 90 applicants to present with the Fond du Lac TEDx talk series. So that is a real accomplishment, and she'll be sharing that same presentation with us today. And we also have Chef Rich Nimke and one of our dietitians, Jenea. Where is Jenea? Oh, there she is, over there, with us. And they'll be doing a, healthy, a live healthy eating demonstration for us. I'm excited about that because I'm a, I'm a real fan of salmon, so thank you. And But first, we do have one of our fellow associates, Michelle Morris, is here with us, and she has a very inspirational reflection that she's prepared to share with us this morning about her journey to a changed lifestyle. So please help me welcome Michelle. And 12. 
that one's from last summer, the one in the middle, when my niece was born. Um, so last September, I was kind of contemplating change in my life. Um, and I was turning 39 in June, and I wanted to kind of get my health under control before I turned 40. I decided to sign up for Dr. Schmidt's total living class. I work over at the West Clinic with her. And I found some unhealthy places in my life that I never really looked at before. Um, my marriage, my sedentary lifestyle, my eating habits. Um, so through her class, I was able to kind of connect with some of the Asian resources that we have here. Um, integrative health, behavioral health, the sleep clinic, and I also joined Weight Watchers and started the Healthy Living Program at the Y. I uh, made lots of appointments, continue to do the hard work, the soul searching, uh, coming out of you know, denial and kind of changing my life. I have some great friends, family and coworkers, a lot of them are in the room today. Um, they helped inspire me along the way a lot. When I started my journey, I was in an abusive marriage. I never labeled it that way, probably because it would mean admitting it was real. It wasn't physical abuse, so the damage wasn't, in, it was more internal, it wasn't visible externally. I was beginning to question why I was allowing myself to be treated that way, and it made me think about my two daughters and the impact it was having on them. Dr. Schmidt's class connected me with the resources I needed. On September 9th, I also joined Weight Watchers with over 200 pounds to lose and wanting to get to a healthy weight. I set a goal of losing 100 pounds my first year. I'm now almost at 125 pounds, and I'm surrounding myself with people that are inspiring me. Some of them are on similar journeys. I've done the hard work. I continue to make the decision every day to continue this through learning, healing, and rediscovering myself. Recently, my Weight Watchers leader encouraged me to become a leader, too. I started training. I'm really excited to inspire other members, and I know I'm going to gain a lot of inspiration from them. I do this for my two daughters who need their mom to be a strong role model for them, like my mom has done for me. <clears throat> I do this for my family and my friends. They support and encourage me in my worst days. My mom was here today. She saw inside me something that I hadn't seen yet. She worried about me like any other mother in this room could relate to. Probably most importantly though, I do this for someone who never was on the list of important people in my life, and that's me. That's the biggest key to my success. I never made myself a priority during my 14-year marriage, and once I started doing that, it made me realize I was strong enough to take my life back. Becoming stronger opened my eyes and allowed me to open my heart again as well. I met someone recently who's already changed my life for the better. I always sat on the couch dreaming about doing things that we've been doing. We recently survived a 14-mile hike in Upper Michigan together, with blisters, a little dehydration, but no arguments and tension, which is something new for us. We both came from a toxic marriage, uh, and coming out of the dark woods together that night after a much longer hike than we expected was kind of like a metaphor for our life together so far. And these shared experiences make us stronger. Just like the first steps on a hike, first dates in a relationship, or first steps to your better life, if you don't take the first step in your journey, you might spend the rest of your life wishing you had. Now is the perfect time to take that step. Not only, um, not long ago I told a new Weight Watchers member that the first step is always the hardest, and each step along the way does get easier. I'm not done with this journey. There's not a destination, maybe just a goal weight. I don't know what tomorrow will bring except another opportunity to take another step to improve myself, and I'm going to hold my head high, think positively, and expect the best. So if you need to think about what one step is that you can take to start your journey for whatever you need to make your life healthier. Weight, 
a new job, less debt. To have different results, you must first change your actions. But before you can change your actions, you have to change the way you think and feel. We are given knowledge and information on what to think. However, we are never taught how to feel our feelings. I've been through four years of college. Okay, five, I was finding myself. <laughs> four years of medical school and three years of residency. There is a lot of knowledge in here. Much of it, useless. With all of this knowledge, I could give you loads of information on what to eat, when to eat, how much to eat, what type of exercise to do, when to exercise, how much to exercise, and hormones in the body related to weight loss and weight gain. However, all of that knowledge has not kept me from getting fat. <clears throat> According to the National Institutes of Health, two-thirds of Americans are overweight or obese. Are the rest of you thinking, this has nothing to do with me? But ask yourself, do you drink too much alcohol? Do you spend too much time on the internet or Facebook? Do you watch too much TV? Overwork? Over shop? Over gamble? Over exercise? Perhaps you can relate to one of these things or even something else. The one thing I've learned as a physician is we all have something. In my case, after a long journey, I learned I became fat by overeating. Shocking, right? <laughs> What was a little shocking was realizing that I overate because I did not know how to feel my feelings. What does it mean to feel your feelings? How does a person do this? Let's walk through the process. First, you must take the time to feel your feelings. I know this sounds funny, but so much of this is unconscious. You must take a moment and pause. Now name your feelings. You may have to start out with, is this a good feeling or a bad feeling? And then narrow it down from there. Now, explain your feelings. Where in your body is it? Your head, your chest, your stomach? Does it have a color? Is it fast or slow? Is it hot or cold? Is it a thumping or just a small vibration? Now, sit with the feeling. Don't try to buffer or dull the emotion but move towards it. Take a deep breath in and relax into it. The reason it is important to feel your feelings is to then identify the thought causing those feelings. I found this to be the secret sauce because I could change thoughts that weren't serving me. But before I could get to this point, I had to feel it, name it, explain it, and sit with it. Again, I had to feel my feelings, name my feelings, explain my feelings, and sit with my feelings. Sorry. Once I started to do this, I found every time I was tired, I ate. Every time I was overwhelmed, I ate. Every time I was happy, I ate. Every time I was angry, bored, lonely, sad, I ate, I ate, I ate. Through 30,000 hours of education, not one person, not a single class in school, no medical book, ever taught me how to feel my feelings or experience my emotions. So I learned the hard way. I buffer with food. I make thousands of decisions a day, many of them critical. I then go home to a husband, two daughters, two dogs, and a cat, all vying for my attention. By eating the cookie, I could empty any emotion into the pot on the back burner for just a moment. When the cookie was gone and the emotional break was over, not only was the pot boiling, it, not only was the pot hot, it was boiling over, and dinner still had to be made. The emotion I was initially trying to avoid, which was usually overwhelm, was still there and now intensified. I would then feel frustrated with the resulting weight gain, and I would buffer the frustration with a cookie, because that made sense. <laughs> I would then feel self-disgust, and again, another cookie. You see the vicious cycle. Now let's refer back to those things I mentioned earlier. Can you relate with too much alcohol, TV, shopping? For every emotion, good or bad, you may have tried to ease the feeling with something and not even realize you were trying to avoid your feelings. 
Unfortunately for me, my buffer was evident for the whole world to see as fat on my body. Your buffer, overworking, overshopping, or gambling, may not be as evident for the world to see. Maybe you're thinking, my buffer's benefiting me. My career's soaring. I'm in great shape. I'm the life of the party after a few drinks. But ask yourself, are you enriching and improving your overall well-being? Are you actually engaging with those who mean the most to you? After years of buffering, my brain has developed some fairly deep-rooted habits in response to food. Are you thinking, don't put food in your mouth. Do you feel your feelings? To understand how hard this is for me to do, the next time you go and sign your name, I want you to sign doctor's signature, not calligraphy, and then take your pen, put it in your other hand, and sign again. What was once an easy automatic task now takes considerable conscious effort and energy. This is what it's like to no longer buffer with food for me. I quickly learned that to remove this buffer would not be easy or mindless. Now take a moment, go back to your something. Again, was it buying those fabulous shoes? Having that third glass of wine? Spending hours on the internet? Now bring awareness to it. In the beginning, I had to do this after I ate the cookie because my eating habits were so unconscious. I would start by asking myself, was I hungry? I had to make sure it was stomach hunger, not brain hunger. Brain hunger is actually emotional eating and cravings. If the answer to the stomach hunger question was no, I would then try to name the emotion I was trying to avoid. I sometimes had a hard time naming the, the feeling, so I did what every good mom does and every physician hates to hear. I googled it. <laughs> I now had my comprehensive list in hand and couldn't name any feeling or emotion that my brain would throw at me. As it, this got easier, I then had to find that split second right after I had the thought, but right before the food was in my mouth, and sit with the emotion. For you, it may be the instant that the shoes are in your shopping cart, the moment that you hear the ice clinking your glass for your gin and tonic, or the second you are typing in your Facebook password. If you have never sat with a feeling intentionally, I'll warn you, it does not feel like rainbows and daisies. For my main emotion overwhelm, it was all racing in my head, an uneasiness in my body, a wanting to crawl out of my skin. Every time I felt overwhelmed, I dreamed of jumping in the car, blasting the radio, and driving far, far away. Doesn't sound terrible, right? Uncomfortable, but not horrible. Then the chatter in my brain started. You deserve that cookie. You just need a little break. It'll taste so good. We all have that voice in our head. Sometimes I wish there was a mute button on mine. This voice, as logical as it sounds, are just my emotions hacking my brain. Now that I've identified that emotion and sat with the feeling, what am I left with? I'm left with living a truly unbuffered life. I know that I can handle any emotion or feeling that my brain will throw at me, and it'll be okay. That doesn't mean I'm in the clear. Unfortunately, every time I felt I had a handle on my emotions, Life would throw me a curveball, like an eight-year-old's birthday party. <laughs> Imagine a dozen eight-year-old girls running around chasing each other at the bounce house. Parents give up giving pickup instructions, presents everywhere, and the cake needs surgery after somebody took a finger sample. <laughs> then the injuries and boo-boo started. My typical response? Brush it off, you'll be okay, I'm not on call. <laughs> Why would that be anxiety provoking? Needless to say, I gravitated to the chip bowl. Looking back, I should have been able to predict that one. Unfortunately, I spent more time with that chip bowl than I did with my birthday girl. Hindsight is 2020. so after the party, I sat down and I described anxiety as a lightheadedness, tunnel vision, dry mouth, butterflies in my stomach, jello legs, and a yellow colored hue. Banana yellow, in fact. 
I practiced all the steps I mentioned earlier, and my new habits began to take hold. Like anything, the more I practice, <clears throat> the easier it gets. You too can connect with others on a deeper level rather than having that alcoholic beverage. You can get more work done rather than feeling overwhelmed. You can have more money in the bank rather than all that extra junk and stuff that you probably didn't need in the first place. Now I can say I enjoy the girls running around and screaming. I may feel a little anxious, but I would rather be with these precious girls and unbuffered than to miss out on the joys of being a parent. I know, without a doubt, I will reach my weight loss goal. I've already lost 35 pounds, and I feel great. It's not just about the weight, though. I can focus like I never could before. I can control the thoughts, I need a cookie, I don't want a cookie, I really want a cookie, I don't need a cookie. I get more work done at work rather than at home, routinely taking back four to five hours of precious weekend time I now get to spend with my family. As you can see, this has all led to an awareness of my thoughts. Now that I can identify the feeling and sit with the feeling, I can identify the thought causing that feeling. I want to challenge you. The next time you reach for the cupcake, credit card, candy crush, or Captain and Coke, you pause, feel your feelings, name your feelings, explain your feelings, and sit with your feelings. Imagine the results you can get when you feel your feelings. Thank you. start with uh, sweet potato quinoa hash. Uh, you do have a recipe card in front of you, so I'm just going to kind of go through it. Uh, as we go along, Janae will be talking about some nutritional tips, if you want any cooking tips. Just raise your hand, she'll call you as we're going. Uh, we'll try to make this uh, a little interactive as possible, okay? So um, I'm going to start with uh, uh, sweet potato. Uh, can you make that full screen? <laughs> so we can make sure we see. Hopefully okay, everyone can see uh, everything up here. All right, we're starting from a raw sweet potato. So who knows if there's health benefits from sweet potato versus a white potato. The color of orange in itself indicates that there is. Um, there's a lot of beta carotene, vitamin A, vitamin C, and sweet potatoes. That, that's just absent in a uh, white potato. Not that white potatoes are void, of, of um, good things, but sweet potatoes just have that extra benefit. Uh, we did peel off the skin, and there is some benefit to the skin. So if there's a recipe that you're making that could actually, um, you could keep the skin on there, make sure it's nice and clean, but that skin has a lot of fiber and vitamins and minerals in it too, so it's a good thing to keep sometimes. Yeah, for this dish, I just chose to peel it. Um, okay. If I'm doing sweet potatoes at home, maybe just in the oven, uh, we eat the skin all the time, uh, just for that added fiber and Absolutely. extra nutrients. So for this, uh, this recipe I'm using olive oil uh, because um, I don't need to cook it super hot. Um, olive oil's got a lower smoke point than some other oils so for frying, uh, maybe for the salmon in a little while, I chose canola oil because it's got a little higher point um, and for this one a little bit lower. And most of us know that uh, olive oil and canola oil are great sources of monounsaturated fats, which is, are those heart-healthy fats that our body really does need. We don't have to eliminate fat from our diet, we just need to choose healthier fats more often. I'm just going to take a little red onion, uh, like with the color, uh, yeah. purple onion, if you want to call it that. Uh, 
And just like with the sweet potato, you know, a purple onion has a little bit different nutrients than like a white onion or a yellow onion. The color really does um, lend a lot of different nutrients. So make sure you have lots of different colors in your diet. So I add a few more. Um, so just when I say a pinch of salt or a pinch of pepper, really whatever fits between your two fingers, not all your fingers, just a little <laughs> two. Um, and I, I usually use kosher salt, uh, coarse grind, uh, a couple of reasons. Uh, main reason is uh, if you're using it in a recipe that you measure out uh, and you measure a teaspoon full of kosher salt, the larger granules will have some air space in between. So you're actually using a little bit less than the real fine grind salt if you use a full teaspoon of that. Absolutely. And I get the question a lot, you know, what just, what's the best salt to buy? Is that pink Himalayan salt, you know, worth extra money here? Sea salt, and really, honestly, salt is all of them have the same amount of sodium. It's just how much we're using. Maybe it might have a stronger flavor, um, something along those lines. So if you have your preferences, kosher salt is a great one because it's next to that large granule. And we don't have to be afraid of salt. Right, our bodies yeah. do need some. Yeah. It's just, uh, you know, if you're using salt while you're cooking, then don't use it afterwards. I mean, it's so easy to grab the salt shaker <laughs> and uh, just load it up before you even taste it. So. Well, and, and of course, 70% of our sodium intake usually comes from processed foods and eating out. So it's not that big of a deal if you're adding a little salt here and there when you're cooking. It's those processed foods that we add. So I'm going to do a little switch here. We're going to, we're actually doing this in, in real time. Uh, no magic of TV today. Uh, pop the cover right on top of there. Because we want to let those steam now a little bit while they're cooking. If you need to hurry it up, you could pre-cook that sweet potato about 78% of the way. And then when you uh, uh, go to cook it this way, it's, it's real quick. So we're just going to let that get happy in there for a little bit. And we're going to come over and uh, start our salmon at the same time. This is a dish you could, you could do this with uh, pretty easy. So. If you wouldn't mind. Thank you. Perfect. <laughs> so We're like basically this. preparing a whole complete meal here, so. Yeah. In just a few minutes time. Right. You can do this. <laughs> you can do this at home. <laughs> Much um, better than eating that, that's for sure. Uh, like I said, I'm gonna use some canola oil. It's got a higher smoke point, cooks uh, probably at about four hundred 410 degrees, you can heat it before it starts to break down. Uh, whereas olive oil, probably around that 360 range, so if you're sauteing or cooking um, something that needs to uh, sear, then you'll want to uh, use a little, little uh, higher smoke point oil. <coughs> and salmon, of course, is that high omega-3 fish. Other options might be like uh, albacore tuna, or um, even a regular tuna has some omega-3 fats in it. Those are probably the most common um, fish in our area. And there's other fish out there that are high in omega-3s, but I don't know when the last time you saw mackerel on grocery shelves was. Um, certainly can't buy it fresh or frozen, so you might be able to find it in a can. But canned fish is actually okay. Um, you can buy the albacore tuna cans, or um, that's a very affordable way to get your fish in. Just make sure it's water packed. And if you can, you can even buy the low sodium variety or no sodium varieties, because that, that'll help even more. Then you can control how much salt goes in. Right. And that, uh, that's what we use here yep. for anything in the cafeteria, the low sodium varieties of that water packed albacore right. or things like that. Um, I did have an interesting question come through uh, about uh, maybe a week ago or so, uh, because we've put salmon on the menu quite a few times. Uh, and the question was about mercury content of fish. Uh, so salmon is one of the lower ones, where you say, uh, just happened to say mackerel right. before, yeah, mackerel is one of the higher, so. Um, and for most of us, and, unless you're a small child or a pregnant woman, the mercury isn't 
that in, in the quantities that we're going to consume, you know, once or twice a, twice a week is what the recommendation is. It's not a big concern. They even released pregnant women to have cantuma. They used to kind of restrict that to like six ounces or something a week. Um, but now they kind of like lifted that a little bit. So. Sorry, a little, little <laughs> technical malfunction at blew a circuit breaker. So we're going to try to get that go. Hold on. How's the smell out there? Yeah, good. Yeah. Yeah. So far. All right. So, Sam, three, four minutes per side is plenty. Uh, I do have on the recipe for this one, you can finish it in the oven. Um, and the reason I do that with this one is uh, because I'm going to use some maple syrup, sweeten it up a little bit, kind of the time of year for it. <laughs> and then, uh, because we, we do so little salt uh, um, and we're used to that right. with processed foods, I like to spice things up just a little bit. Even if you don't like heat, if you use a little, it's going to bring out some, some great flavors uh, for it. So I've got a little uh, chipotle pepper powder. Uh, chipotle is a smoked jalapeno and then dried and then browned. So and I'm just going to pour a little bit over the top. Oh, wow. And we're using maple syrup here, which I think, you know, talking about that, and maple syrup is an added sugar, just like sugar or honey or agave. Um, added sugars in general, we want to try to watch, but it's okay to have here and there. The recommendations are somewhere, they're varied. The American Heart Association says that women can probably have about six teaspoons a day or men nine teaspoons. Um, the uh, healthy guidelines for Americans actually say more like 10% of your calories. So if you are eating a higher calorie diet, then you can have a little bit more sugar in your diet. It ends up like if you're a 15, if you're on a, like a 1500 calorie diet, it's about nine teaspoons, which is sort of what women eat sometimes. Okay, so uh, as you can see, um, onions are starting to caramelize in there. The uh, sugars are coming out of the sweet potato and everything is again, just getting a little happy. Uh, I've got some minced garlic. Everything's better with a little garlic. I'm gonna put a little bit of that in. Uh, if you don't like it, too bad. Learn to like it. <laughs> garlic is good yeah. for you. Sure, absolutely. Herbs, herbs, seasoning, garlic, all of those things are technically vegetables. We can use them. They have nutrients just like vegetables do. So when you're adding to things, you're adding bonus nutrients. Bonus nutrients. Uh, yeah. Some greens, some uh, herbs. So yep. I'm going to do some uh, fresh basil, some fresh cilantro. Uh, they really do go good together. Um, I like to just kind of make a little herb ball uh, of it, and then just just mince it up a little. And I add this more towards the end because uh, with fresh herbs, you don't need to cook them long. Uh, they're great flavors, right? Right on their own, fresh. So I'm going to add almost all of this. I'm going to save a little bit for the garnish. I'm going to put that in, and the step that is missing off your recipe is to add the quinoa <laughs> when you add the garlic, and then cook it a couple, a uh, uh, minute or two more. So you all have pens there. Write that down yeah. so you don't forget. And who's had quinoa? We serve it in the cafeteria all the time now. <laughs> all right, Only good. Only about a third. Okay. So, um, Quinoa, one of the ancient grains, it's been around for thousands of years. Uh, I think uh, domestically three or four thousand years. Uh, it's, it's quite quite a bit. I chose red for this. Uh, there's red, white, black. There's there's a lot of colors of quinoa out there. Um, most popular, red and white. Uh, the red stays a little bit crunchier, um, and it's got a little more nutty flavor to it. So. I really like using that. It also has a really nice color. I like the color of it. It's a nice contrast, especially if you combine it with like a brown rice. Some people will make blends of things. It really helps with this. Yep. And the nice thing about quinoa, you know, it's, it's certainly a whole grain, um, but also it's a protein. It is actually a complete protein, which means it contains all of the essential amino acids that our bodies need. 
Um, and that's different from any other kind of grain. The only other plant product, non-meat or dairy product, that's like that is really soy. So it's, it's great um, for vegetarians or people that are trying to eat more meatless meals because they're going to get a lot of those essential meals. <laughs> Sorry, I got a little excited. <laughs> so I'll just take some of that maple syrup that's, that's been uh, uh, caramelizing in the pan uh, with the chipotle powder. It's done, came out fantastic. I used some uh, thinner fillets today just to get them cooked like that. Well, and I think fish is like the ultimate fast food. I mean, you can cook fish from even frozen, like you can thaw it really quickly, you can cook it really quickly versus like chicken or um, beef. It takes a lot longer for it to thaw and then cook it. So I think fish is like one of those really fast foods that's easy to prepare quickly even on a weekend. So, so like we said, com complete meal today. In like less than a half an hour. Yeah. So, sweet potato quinoa. Like 15 minutes almost. <laughs> right? <laughs> Which leaves plenty of times for everyone to ask a question. Right? <laughs> so, will this be served for lunch today? Sam, <laughs> great question, Marge. Sorry. Not today. Uh, the Chipotle maple salmon is on the menu in the cafeteria, though, so watch for it. Uh, and a version of the uh, sweet potato hash. We do sweet potato quinoa pancakes, oh. like a potato pancake. So those are on uh, uh, on as well. So I just threw a little green beans for color, just so we could uh, complete the dish. Right. Look at that. It's a beautiful dish. Take a little bit of our, our extra herbs for the top, just a little garden. And we eat with our eyes, so it's important to make your plates pretty. <laughs> I think we should skip the drawing for the cup and get a drawing. Sure. Uh, garlic can easily burn, uh, so if you're adding it, uh, unless you're using fresh um, and roasting garlic, I do like to use the, the minced uh, in the jar. Nothing wrong with that. It's super easy, um, uh, and you don't you don't need it in there unless you're maybe cooking a sauce or something that simmers for a while. But a quick cook, uh, you don't want to degrade the garlic too much. Uh, and it can burn super fast, super easy. So that's why at the end, just for a minute. Terry. Carb content of sweet potatoes. Well, they contain, they contain carbs, but you know, we don't need to be afraid of carbs. You know, we, we need small portions of them here and there. And they have, since they have a lot more vitamins and minerals, fiber, there's a lot of complex carbs. And complex carbs are, are the ones that we want to choose. It's the refined white grains um, that we don't want to have in our diets most of the time. So don't be afraid of carbs. They're actually uh, an important part of our diet. Our brain actually runs almost solely on carbs. So if you're ever following a low carb diet and you notice that you're not able to think as clearly, that's probably why. <laughs> so make sure you're getting a good balance of vegetables and um, your protein and then your carbs too. So, yeah. Rosanna? The question was if you prefer shredded potatoes over uh, diced, will it change the cooking time or texture? Uh, probably lessen the cooking time a little bit. Uh, uh, cook them like hash browns uh, to make, but easily make the same recipe with that, sure. How many servings is this is this hash? Uh, that that hash. Uh, that looks like a lot of sweet potatoes. Right. Yeah, I, just, I would I probably kind of say I would probably say there is at least four servings. Yeah, in depends on the size of the sweet potato. Uh, if you some of them are right. 
big as your head, right. and some are uh, you know small. So yeah. go by the, the yeah, a small a small potato, size. more like the size of like a computer mouse or something like that, or about a half a cup to a cup, somewhere in that range is the serving size for like the carbohydrate. Um, that my plate is a good representation because you know if you fit it into that quadrant, that whole grain or starchy food quadrant of your plate, then you know you're usually that your serving size is under control. So, great question. Molly. Um, <laughs> it's funny they asked that question. Uh, Holly just asked if we had classes, and uh, yes. Every other Wednesday evening through Health Resource Center, Terry St. Lawrence right up here, uh, we host cooking classes at the West uh, Clinic in the demo kitchen in the basement. Um, I think we're taking December off, but we'll uh, relaunch in January or February, and it's every other week. Uh, they're usually about 10 or $15 for associates, uh, depending on what's going on. There's usually takeaways, uh, two, three, or four recipes, uh, so and really, you get dinner. I mean, they feed you well. <laughs> so come to those hungry. So watch for those on the uh, the well-being calendar, right? Uh, or on the, or on the website or through Health Resource Center. My question is for Michelle. Um, Michelle Cooper, Health Resource Center. Um, you Yep, on Fridays at noon there's a Weight Watchers class that meets, um, so weigh-in starts a little before 12, I think, and then um, the meeting lasts half an hour, and you, people bring their lunch and come and sit, and you get weighed in and have a meeting here, so it's really a nice uh, opportunity to get involved, and you can join here too, like I joined here, but I also go to the center sometimes, like on Saturday morning, so like if the noon time doesn't always work and you can't get away, you can always go at different date to the center, so... Oh, yeah. Um, so Dr. Schmidt's class includes cooking demos. Yeah. Oh, sure. I, t I go to four of those, too, so yeah. dietitian involved. And you get to have a meal and everything and learn recipes. Um, we talk about, like, that overall well-being. You've probably seen that with, like, all the colors on, uh, about, like, your financial health, emotional, um, physical health, all, all the aspects of your life that you know, affect your health. So it's just really a great class. It's um, once a month or twice a month. Right now they're doing um, 9 to 11 on Tuesday mornings. So, but with more interest, she would add more classes. She used to have like an afternoon or two that was offered. So, yeah, it's a really great class. And then yeah. you get and it's, and it's, a, it's, and it's, a, it's considered a doctor's appointment. So usually mm -hmm. your insurance has pretty good coverage for that. So it's a really nice informational thing. And you get to talk to others and uh, that are going through the same thing, which is really nice. Yeah, and then each week is a different topic. So right. like, I got, I did a sleep study because the one week was about like sleep, this year, how important the sleep is in your life and everything. So I ended up with a CPAP <laughs> and everything. Nobody wants one of those, but then once you have it, you realize how, you know, you're really sleeping very well. And the sleep study opens your eyes to see like you were, you know, almost dying in your sleep because you stopped breathing. So um, yeah, that's really eye-opening. And then you just talk about different topics that you know you don't really think about that are affecting your health. So it's a good program. I love it. Any other questions? Okay, if you think of something later, <laughs> or if you want to reach out, any questions about recipes, cooking techniques, nutrition, uh, easiest way to get a hold of us would be through cafe comments at agdesion.com. It's a direct email to us. Um, that we can uh, we can answer anything for you there. Uh, so, all right. How about a great round of applause for all of our presenters? All right. So we're gonna have two prizes. Two prizes. Yes. Are we raffling off the food? Yes. <laughs> yeah. Wait. Just pick this one right here. That says Katie Tang. Okay. <laughs> Big so big we'll big go first for the half, food. So we'll yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> wow. I mean, you can. <laughs> Jody Beetzel? Jody. Oh. Jody. Jody. There she is. <laughs> All right, Jody, it's your lucky day. So can she just meet you? Yeah, I'll here? Package, you have I'll the hands? Oh, okay. Okay. And then this is for the mug. Cindy Miller. Cindy. 
There she is. Congratulations, Cindy. Thanks, everyone, for being here. If you have follow-up questions, I know they'll be here for a little while cleaning up. So thanks, and have a great rest of the day.